I don't know about you guys, but the first two hours of Raw tonight was actually not that bad. I would have said the first two hours, Monday Night Raw tonight, up until uh, Seth Rollins vs. Kevin Owens, which closed the first hour, or the, the second hour, going into the third hour. That match was very good, and the show stopped right there. I thought this would have been a good episode of Monday Night Raw tonight, but the third hour was just dragging, and I, 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 can't, I don't know about you guys, but I can never not get tired during the third hour. Like, I'm sitting here, I'm literally so exhausted. I am really, really tired right now, and I'm, to be honest with you, I just want to get by this review and call it night. I really do. I got bigger videos plan for this week than this one. If there's a video this week that I can just run by hopefully in 20 minutes and get and get done with, it's this one. So that's what I'm going to try to do tonight. We had a couple good things on the show. Like I said, Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens was very good. The main event for the Women's Tag Team Championships with Sasha Banks and Bailey versus the Kabuki Warriors. That match was great. I really enjoyed that match, and then I really, outside of that, nothing much happened on the show. We saw Bianca Belair come back, and Shayna Baszler come back. I guess Bruce found Bianca and Shayna Baszler, so we'll talk about that and what I think should happen at SummerSlam. But if you guys not have not checked out already, make sure you guys check out both of my AEW Fighter Fest reviews, Night 1. With Sammy Kalaf and Night 2 with Wesley Williams. Make sure you go check both of them out right now on the Big Fight Field channel. Make sure you guys go check out my AEW Fight for the Fallen contest video. And if you're watching this review, it's the last time you can enter. Make sure you comment in this very video. You comment AEW Fight for the Fallen. And you will subscribe to Big Fight Field. And you will be entered in the contest very last minute, so you can make a last minute stretch to getting into this contest for a fight for the following on Wednesday night. And then make sure you guys go check out my promo that I cut on my brother, Brady Thomas. And an eventual date, it'll be me versus him and a knockout match. And I assure you, I'm going to knock him out. So I'm going to knock out my own brother, so... That's that. And without further ado, I, I just want to start this raw review and get out of here. We had the VIP lounge which opened up with Dolph Ziggler. And this led to Drew McIntyre coming out. And Drew Man and Dolph Ziggler said the reason Drew's the WWE champion is because of me. He beat Brock Lesnar because of me. He's beaten all these challengers because of me. So we got Dolph Ziggler saying the reason Drew McIntyre is successful is because of him. Then Drew McIntyre came out and basically said, um, you know, you, you've used me when we were a tag team in 2018. I was the workhorse. You just sat back and let me do all the work. And you know what? He's kind of, he's right. Drew McIntyre was the workhorse of that tag team. And Dolph Ziggler let Drew do all the work. So he's really right when saying that. And he said this Sunday at Extreme Rules, the horror show... Or it's the horror show at Extreme Rules. Uh, he's going to torture Dolph Ziggler. So this was their last minute attempt to kind of get you excited for this match. Uh, am I excited for it? No. Um, the stipulation, actually, um, it's not confirmed by me. Uh, I heard this on a Facebook story um, earlier today, and it was possibly leaked. That the stipulation for the Dolph Ziggler Drew McIntyre match is a tables, ladders, and chairs match. I guess that'd be pretty cool. I guess I'm not really sure, but if we get that uh, Drew McIntyre Dolph Ziggler TLC match, I wouldn't mind. That 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 should be fine. We then saw Andrade and Angel Garza go up against the Viking Raiders in a tag team match, and it was an elimination match. I don't really know how to feel about this one. They just... Angel Garza and Andrade, they won. It's whatever. Uh, they beat the Viking Raiders once already, and they did it again. Uh, Garza 
and Andrade are more than likely in line to face the Street Profits for the Tag Team Championships at SummerSlam. And they should be taking the Tag Team Championships off of the Street Profits at SummerSlam. So that's what I think of the Andrade, Angel Guards, and Viking Raiders match. I mean, it was whatever. I didn't really care for it. The Viking Raiders are just a, they are a comedy joke on the main roster. They were taken serious in NXT, putting on great matches at TakeOver with the likes of the Young Sputed Era, the Rouse, the Black, and Ricochet. They were in war games with the Undisputed Era, and now, now they're treated as a joke on the main roster. And it sucks. It really does. Ruby Riot and Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair is alive, folks. Vince McMahon and Bruce found Bianca Belair. But I actually, I actually got a follow-up story to say about Bianca Belair. Once I'm done talking about this match, it's going to be very quickly. Because they went up against the Iconics. And thank God the Iconics lost this match. Because if they honestly won this match, I would have been very pissed. Now, Bianca pinned Billy Kay. The Iconics suck. We all know that. They can't bump. They can't wrestle. Uh, Peyton Royce is improving a little bit. Not much, but she's improving a little bit. Billy Kay, that woman cannot bump whatsoever. Now, Bianca Belair. We saw Bianca Belair team up with Ruby Riot tonight on Raw. She got the victory for her team. Now, there's an article on, on Twitter that I saw that it caught my eye. and I, th I thought I'd reveal it. I would talk about it. On this review tonight. Reason why Bianca Belair returned to Raw this week. Now, it was re previously reported that Bianca didn't work into the Street Profits Viking Raiders. Anything you could do, I can do better angle. So, they took her off TV. Which is absolutely stupid, if you ask me. I, I, I talked about that on News and Rumors a few weeks ago. But... You guys might think this is true. You might, you guys might not think it's not. It's not true. But Ringside News has learned that the current plan for Bianca Belair was for Bianca Belair's part in this storyline isn't long term. She was used as a placeholder until Liv Morgan can return. Morgan has been off WWE television for the past couple of weeks. And it's unknown exactly why she hasn't been on television. So, if they are literally using Bianca Belair as a placeholder until Liv Morgan gets back, that is a damn shame, man. And I really hope that they keep Bianca Belair on television because... She's too good not to be on television. And she had a really... She had a good performance even though she went up against wrestlers who, who can't sell. But she's too good not to be on television. And they need to find her something to do on television. Sooner rather than later. And then we were going to get uh, our truth I'm going to run through this really quick. We were going to get our truth for Akira Tozawa. And then Shayna Baszler came out. And I was like, what the, f like, I don't want to curse, but what the hell is Shayna Baszler doing out here in this 24-7 angle? Like, are they really going to give her the 24-7 championship and put her in the men's division? Like, I actually thought that for a second, but she attacked the ninjas and Akira Tozawa and our truth ran away from her. She said, I've been sitting patiently in the back and I'm sitting, I'm patient no more. All these champions running around thinking they're cool. Well, now they got to meet their reality. And the reality is Shayna Baszler. Great. Great promo from Shayna Baszler. But we, now, we need to, now, we got, now we got Bianca and Shayna on TV tonight. We need to keep both of them on TV to, uh, uh, in the next few weeks. One of three things need to happen. At SummerSlam. Number one. We get Shayna Baszler versus Asuka. For the Raw Women's Championship. At SummerSlam. Two. We get Bianca Belair. Versus Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship at SummerSlam. Or three. 
We're going to have a triple threat between all three of them for the Raw Women's Championship at SummerSlam. One of those three things need to happen at SummerSlam. Charlotte Flair is out. Hopefully she does not come back before SummerSlam. Nia Jax, I have no idea where Nia Jax is. Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks has no chance against Asuka at Extreme Rules. The match should be great, but no way Sasha Banks is beating Asuka at Extreme Rules. So they need to, WWE needs to do either Asuka and Shayna, Asuka and Bianca, or a triple threat at SummerSlam. Then we got Seth Rollins cutting a promo. He cut a pretty good promo here. He was talking about, he, he, like he was trying to think what an eye for an eye is, and he said Rey Mysterio thought he was using it as a joke, but it means Rey Mysterio literally wants to rip Seth Rollins' eye out of his eye socket, and he said Extreme Rules this Sunday is really going to be a horror show. Then Kevin Owens came out, and uh, he said a few things. He, he pretended to give Rollins an eye patch, and Rollins was like, you think this is funny? And then Rollins called out Murphy, and Black came out, and they brawled, and we got right into Alistair Black versus Buddy Murphy, which ended in a DQ. The match was about six minutes, and um, th there was this one spot where Murphy was on the top rope, and he was going to suplex Black into the uh, 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 Black was going to suplex him into the ring, but Murphy shoved Black off, and Black gave Murphy a black mask with Murphy standing on the second rope, falling into the ring, and that visual was actually great. That was a great visual. A black giving Murphy the black mess then. And then Rollins pulled out the black out. And it caused a DQ. And we got right into Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. And uh, we got Rey Mysterio and Dominic out there. And Alistair Black. Murphy is knocked out because, you know, he got a black mess from Alistair Black. So, um... This match was really good. I really liked the story they were telling. Rollins was all by himself. He had all baby faces there. Anytime Rollins tried to escape, it was either Alistair Black was going to stop him, Dominic was going to stop him, Kevin Owens was going to stop him, or Rey Mysterio was going to stop him. I actually really liked the story here, and that's what made this match so good. Then Rollins got momentum, and he said, come on. You guys want to attack me now? Trying to cause a DQ. And then Rollins and then Owens getting back with momentum. Then Rollins would get back. And then at the end, Rollins actually gave Owens, a, a, he actually raked his eye. And then Alistair Black got on the apron and he stared down Rollins. Dominic got on the apron and stared down Rollins. Rey Mysterio got on the apron and stared down Seth Rollins. And then Rollins turned around. He turned right into a stunner. And, you know, Kevin Owens beat Seth Rollins. And then, uh, kind of shocked me. I actually thought this match was going to end in a DQ, but it didn't. Rollins lost tonight to Kevin Owens. And Rey Mysterio said, you, you put my family through all this trouble. And all this chaos. And now what you did to me. I'm going to do to you. This Sunday. So. With Seth Rollins losing tonight. It all but tells me. That it's. Conf it's basically confirmed. That Rey Mysterio is losing. At Extreme Rules. I'm not surprised by this whatsoever. Rey Mysterio is working. Without a contract. He actually refused. To sign a new contract because he wanted a raise and Vince McMahon said no. Imagine the greatest mass wrestler of all time, Rey Mysterio, asked for a little raise and Vince McMahon said no. He ought to be ashamed of himself for saying no to Rey Mysterio. Now this is their way. To take Rey Mysterio off of television. Uh, to blind him. 
So WWE, they're being petty right here to Rey Mysterio, being like, you know, you you don't want to sign a new deal with us. Okay, we're gonna blind you, and if you don't come back, you're gonna be a you're gonna be a you're gonna be a blind man. So that's WWE being petty towards Rey Mysterio. Then we got into the third hour, and this is the part where I'm going to breeze through, and I'm just going to go right to the main event. We got R-Truth and Randy Orton, and Randy Orton beat R-Truth in about 15 seconds. Then Randy Orton wanted to hit a punt on R-Truth, and the big show came out, and Randy Orton was like, don't take a step. You saw what I did to Edge and Christian, but I wasn't going to do the same thing to R-Truth. R-Truth wasn't on my punt list, and then he said... What are you doing next Monday? I'm free next Monday. How about me and you in an unsanctioned match? Big Show accepts. We're getting Big Show and Randy Orton in an unsanctioned match in 2020. Big Show versus Randy Orton in 2020. Unsanctioned. Hey, at least it's not on extreme rules. You know what I mean? At least... This match is not happening at Extreme Rules, and it's happening on Raw. They probably put it on Raw because they thought this would be a good way to bring in ratings. We'll see next Monday if this if this match brings a rating. I doubt it. I highly doubt this match brings ratings. We then got an interview backstage with Drew McIntyre, and he didn't really get much to say. And Dolph Ziggler attacked him. And agents and producers were pulling these two back. And that's that. Uh, that's really it. With the Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler. I was ex- I was kind of excited about it first. Now my interest level has skyrocketed down. Like the match is so predictable. I cannot take Dolph Ziggler as a serious threat. To the WWE Championship. He is. WWE's top. Enhancement talent. Next to Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler. Are WWE's top two. Enhancement talents. Bobby Lashley versus Ricochet. This was very quick. Uh, About six minutes. uh, Ricochet did a springboard off the rope. Lashley caught him into the full Nelson. And Ricochet tapped out. Cedric did the same thing, and he caught Cedric into the full Nelson, and that was it. We're building to towards Apollo Crews versus MVP for the United States Championship at Extreme Rules. Um, Now, I like MVP. I kind of like Bobby Lashley now. He's doing all right. MVP has been phenomenal since his comeback, but... The pairing of MVP and Bobby Lashley, it's supposed to be getting Bobby Lashley over. Why are we putting MVP in a championship match on pay-per-view? Why? I really don't get that. We're supposed to be pushing MVP. uh, uh, My bad. We're supposed to be pushing Bobby Lashley here. Not MVP. We're pushing Bobby Lashley. But yet you're you're giving MVP... A championship match against Apollo Crews for the U.S. Championship at Extreme Rules. I ask why. I ask why. I don't want to see MVP get a championship match in 2020. Nobody does. Nobody. Before the main event, they run through the Extreme Rules match card. I'll go through it really quickly. We got Braun Strowman versus Bray Wyatt in a Wyatt Swamp match. Uh, that's more than likely going to main event the show. Uh, Dolph Ziggler versus Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. Dolph Ziggler picks a stipulation, like I said. I can't take this match seriously because Dolph Ziggler, he's a loser. Um, Oscar for Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship. Uh, Nikki Cross versus Bailey for the SmackDown Women's Championship. MVP versus Apollo Crews for the United States Championship. Seth Rollins versus... Rey Mysterio in an eye for an eye match, and then MV and then uh, Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus in a bar fight, and 
well, after I just went through the Extreme Rules Magic Card, I might as well say this now. Um, Thursday, I will be joined by a very good friend, DJ Storms, Mr. Controversy, the best damn operator on YouTube. He will be joining me on Thursday for, uh, for WWE Extreme Rules Preview and Predictions. So make sure you guys don't miss out on that. You're not going to want to miss... DJ Storms on the Big Fight Field channel for um, Extreme Rules preview predictions. Main event, Kabuki Warriors challenged Sasha Banks and Bailey for the Women's Tag Team Championships. Like I said in the beginning of this video, this match was great. All four of these women are great, especially uh, Sasha Banks. And I thought Kyrie Sane was very good in this match. Uh, Kyrie Sane hit the insane elbow on Sasha, and I got a question. This I got a question. A few things in the match. Although this match was great, uh, um, all four women have great. Uh, I have, I'm saying this word "great" so many times, but it gets old. But these women have really good chemistry together, um, and I actually thought Kyrie Sane was going to win the match with the insane elbow. But I have to question this the decision. Why, if Oscar's standing up there, why didn't Oscar go after Bailey if she knew Bailey was right there, uh, and, and she pulled Kyrie Sane away? That kind of made Oscar look like an idiot in that sequence. Then Kyrie Sane bounced off the rope, went for the flying forearm. Sasha countered. Bank statement. Kyrie tapped out. Sasha and Bailey retained the women's tag team champions. Sasha Banks and Bailey are literally carrying the entire women's division on their back. They are the only good thing in the women's division. Maybe Asuka. Maybe. But outside of those three, uh, the women's division is dead in the WWE. Absolutely dead. And... It, it We're at 22 minutes, and I'm done the Raw review. I'd say that's a pretty short review um, for me, because I usually go over 30 minutes. So, um, that's it. That's it for the Raw review. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. If you have not already, make sure to subscribe to the Big Fight Feel channel. If you have not already, we're trying to get to 150 subscribers before Wednesday's AEW Fight for the Fallen. Comment down below what you thought of this week's episode of Raw. Like I said, this show needs to be two hours. It really does. The third hour, every single week, kills the vibe of this show. If this show was two hours tonight, this would have been a good show. But the third hour just killed it. And instead, it was a okay, sh okay, best, at sh uh, okay show. That's what I'm trying to say. Like this video if you enjoyed the review. And then follow me on Twitter. At Conlon underscore Joseph. I am actually at 987 followers. So I am 13 followers away from 1,000 followers over on Twitter. So make sure you go follow me over on Twitter. And then finally, last but not least. If you have not entered the AEW Fight for the Fallen contest. All you got to do is comment in this video, AEW, Fight for the Fallen, and subscribe to Big Fight Feel, and you were entered last minute in the contest. I'll be picking a winner tomorrow shortly after my Fight for the Fallen uh, preview comes out here on the Big Fight Feel channel. That's it for me tonight, folks. I'm going to get some rest. I got an eight-hour shift tomorrow. Upload Fight for the Fallen preview tomorrow for you guys. And have a good night. Stay safe.